Life Audio. Hello and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that Bible in our show notes and also on our website. And we also have the community group. So just look under Facebook communities and look for Daily Bible Podcast. And it's so fun to watch, just to follow through with that uh, community. Just, it's so refreshing. They're awesome. We have like the best people. I'm making all kinds of new friends. I I love it. I know. Okay. So today let's jump in because today is one of those big uh (laughs) uh-oh days. A big uh uh-oh. Okay. So confession here. I was doing this one and I texted Michelle. I'm like, I'm so glad you're doing the intro. (laughs) I am so frustrated with these people right now. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Today, today is one of those. I, yeah, as I was reading. So today we are reading Exodus 32, 33 and 34. And, um, and as I was reading, I kept thinking, God has set Aaron aside. Like, Aaron, like, what are you doing, man? Like, what are, what you, are you thinking? God has big plans for you. Like, God what, has why plans. are you trying to do this? Okay, so if you haven't read yet, um, well, you can stop your podcast right now and go and read. But while Moses is up on the mountain with God, getting instructions and getting wisdom and learning and, and writing everything down and keeping everything in his mind, the Israelites are up to no good because they're like, you know what? We're a little bored. We're a little bored because Moses has been up on this mountain for 40 days and like our leader is gone. Oh, woe is me. We're going to die. And, um, and so yeah, it just, I was like, and they probably weren't bored. I don't know what they were thinking, but so they're complaining to Aaron. They're complaining about something. I don't know what they're complaining about, but basically they think that if Aaron would just give them some gods who could lead them, then life would be great. Cause yeah. remember that's the Egyptian way yeah. and that's what they learned. And, um, and, and so Aaron said, fine. Okay. Give me all your gold rings. Give me all your, you know, your fine gold from your wives and your sons and your daughters. And well, what did Aaron do? He makes this golden calf. And of course that didn't go over well because God was ready to destroy them. Mm-hmm. I mean, really seriously. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it would not go over well. So, um, so then, of course, Moses is is interceding, and he's reminding God of his promise. And then, so God changed his mind. And the ESV says relented, because there are so many times that you're like, does God change his mind? I mean, we do see this several times, but you're like, does God change his mind? Or just did the story happen that way? Um, so the, the version that we read today said God changed his mind. And then the English standard version says he relented. So I was just, I was still trying to play back and forth yeah. with that one. Just what does that look like? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and of course, God is mad. And Moses is mad. He's so mad at this people that he took the stone tablets that God had inscribed on and he threw them on the ground. And, um, and, and I think, one big thing to notice here, and it's just, it's in a very small verse, but the enemies of Israel, they are watching this and they were amused. Like they were like, look at those Israelites. God did some incredible <laughs> things. And yet look at what they're doing and look how everyone's acting. <laughs> So they, they'd have to be pretty close because they didn't have binoculars. I mean, were they on a mountain, like peering down yeah. and but they didn't have, uh, you know, a TV. So they're just like watching this play out. Oh, my goodness. I know, really. I'm sure the novelist in you and the writer in me is just like, how how did this happen? Like, how did really this happen? Yeah. So and then then we see Moses intercede again. And later on, he is constantly interceding for these people. And Moses asks God, he says, let me know your ways. 
so I may understand you more fully. Mm-hmm. I, I, I just, I want to be a part of that conversation. Yes. You know, God and, and Moses had this little conversation and, and finally God answers Moses's request. And he says, I know you by name. Like, I know you by name. And God gives Moses a second set of tablets. And here we see God reminding Moses that the Israelites need to be set apart. So this this is a huge thing for God. My people need to be set apart. My people need to be looking differently. My people do not need to be putting on a show for their enemies. They do not need to be comic relief for their enemies. (laughs) My people need to be set apart. And then, in fact, he uses the word must, like he just keeps using the word must over and over again. You must worship no other gods. You must not make a treaty. You must not, you must, you must not. I counted must like 11 times Mm -hmm. in this next section. That is so good. And I just am still stuck on that part of the enemies we're watching. (laughs) I didn't pick that up. And it reminds me of when I speak at homeschool conferences and I love to take my family anytime I could take them and they could be part of it. But then they're like fighting in the foyer of the hotel. (laughs) And I'm like, yes, hello. I am your speaker (laughs) that these are my children fighting. I don't know. God's like, we're supposed to be holy here, people. And the enemies are like, oh, my goodness, look how they're acting. I don't know. My, my mind's stuck there. So <laughs> yeah. it's just, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's real so. life. I mean, it really is. It's it's real life. And it is just, uh, it's the sin nature in all of us. It is. It is. And yeah, I can't believe the emotions that rose up when I read about the golden calf. Um, I was listening it to on audio when I was making dinner and I was like, I'm done. I turned it off for a second. I texted you. I'm like, these people, (laughs) because yesterday I was so moved as God was talking about Aaron's anointing. And now we have the Holy spirit. It was just like this beautiful moment. I was just feeling so connected. And then there's this golden calf and the people are worshiping it. And then the Levites, okay. The Levites were called to slaughter those who worshiped it they slaughtered people like they ran around with swords and slaughtered people and then god also sent a great plague upon the people because they worshiped the calf that aaron made so and then i remembered as you said michelle like god was giving moses these instructions and they had not happened yet so that's like i'm like why would you do this look god has this whole priestly thing so i had to remember this god is giving these instructions Aaron has not yet been consecrated as a priest and Moses has been up there a long time and Aaron has no idea what's happening. Um, Aaron was Moses's mouthpiece and Moses was telling Aaron what to say, but now Aaron is on his own. So you talked about each of us have a sin nature. His humanity is very clear here. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, God's thundering on the mountain and Aaron's making an idol. (laughs) So, and saying, this is the God that brought you out of Egypt. So what really like settled my soul here was that God knew this was happening. So even as Aaron was building up the golden calf, God was speaking to Moses about how to anoint Aaron as a priest. And God knew that he wanted Aaron to become this holy priest. At the same time, Aaron was making horrible mistakes. It just gave me hope for us. Like God Mm -hmm. has compassion for us that he knows even as we're making mistakes he has good plans for us um and then i love the compassion and faithfulness um of these chapters god sent the angel of the lord to go with them he continued to meet with moses in the tent of meeting sitting with him face to face he allowed his goodness to pass before moses god wrote on the stone tablets for a second time god still made the covenant with his people even though the people had failed Mm -hmm. God remained faithful and he had amazing plans for them. They didn't even know it all yet. Cause again, Moses was up there. They, they haven't heard all these things yet. So God still had compassion, even in the middle of their big mistakes. I love how you reminded us that God remained faithful. So spoiler alert, um, we're going to be singing great is thy faithfulness at my wedding. And it's because that 
that hymn means so much mm-hmm. to me. And I think it means even more to me now walking through this season of my life because I sit there and I'm like, he's always been faithful. And there's been so many times where I have not been faithful, where yeah. I have been an Israelite, or I have been an Aaron, or I have even questioned like Moses. And God is always faithful. He has amazing plans for us. And he's always right there with us going, okay, let's just head up. Let's just, let's just course correct here. Let's just course correct. I, I will forgive you. I will forgive your sins. Let's just course correct. And, and I, I just am in awe of, of his faithfulness that yeah. he is. He is so faithful. Well, we need to take a break. I need to wipe my tears a little bit. And uh, then we're going to hear from um, our sponsor and we'll be back with the word of the day next. Stay tuned. Hey there, it's Nicole Eunice from the How to Study the Bible podcast. And I'd love to invite you to join us as we weekly discover a passage of God's word together from beginning to end, from principles to practicals. We are here to make sure that God's word is powerful and relevant to your life. If that sounds like something you're looking for, I would love to invite you to subscribe. You can go to lifeaudio.com and search How to Study the Bible, and we'll see you there. Okay, before we get to the word of the day, I just want to read um, the passage in Exodus where where God meets with Moses, Mm -hmm. because I think that kind of sets the stage for the word of the day. And, and so we see the Lord come down in a cloud and he stood there with Moses and, um, and he called out his own name, Yahweh. I mean, I just, uh, you know, the, the, like the video reel in my head, um, the audio reel in my head is just like Yahweh. And the Lord passed in front of Moses calling out Yahweh, the Lord, the God of compassion and mercy. I am slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. I lavish unfailing love to all thousand generations. I forgive iniquity, rebellion, and sin. I do not excuse the guilty. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children and grandchildren. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generation, Mm. which reminds us to remember. I mean, it does remind us to remember, but but one thing, as I read this passage and and um, and God's giving his his promises, he says, I will go out ahead of you and I will drive out the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Hittites. I will bring you to this land, but you must. And that's yes. our word of the day that I just kind of landed on. There was so many other things today that I felt we could have landed on, but I landed on must because if you look at must, it's a verb. It says, be obliged to, you should, it's expressing necessity, I must. Or if we look at it as a noun, it's something that should not be overlooked or missed. You must. And that's what God is asking of us when he gives us these commandments. And he gave the Israelites, he's talking to Moses and he's like, you must worship no other gods. You must not make a treaty. You, you must do this. You must not do that. He's, he's asking his people for their regard of him and only of him. He's asking for their total obedience for their, just that their obedience encompass everything. And I, I just walked away after reading um, today's words and I was just like, I must live a life that is holy and acceptable to him. I must live that. Not to say that he won't forgive me because we know, we know he will forgive me, but I need to try and not just try. I need to have a stronger word in my language, in my vocabulary. I must do this. And um, anyway, so yeah, word of the day, must. I love that. And and he was saying that not to just put rules in their life. Like I have nothing else to do, follow these rules, but he knew it would be best for them if they Mm. followed those rules. He had so many good things planned and by them strain, they didn't get to fulfill all that he had planned for them as we're going to see in these upcoming books of the Bible. But if they would have done it, if we, you know, then turn it back to us, if we would just do it, he has so much 
for us. Um, and what I love is that, that that part you read, Michelle, is so powerful. He's merciful and gracious and slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Um, you know, he's declaring all these things about himself to Moses, but then he showed all these things in this mm. chapter. He showed how he's merciful and gracious and slow to anger. I mean, he got That's angry, point. but can you imagine, like, he could have really, he could have just lightning bolts and they'd been donk gone. Mm-hmm. Like, he, so he's declared these things, but he showed it before them. And then I love how he continued to meet with Moses, giving him promise after promise. And afterwards, Moses's face shone. Mm-hmm. Um, Exodus thirty four twenty nine says that Moses wasn't aware that his face had become radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. And then after meeting with the Lord, the people would see the radiant glow. So mm-hmm. he actually had to wear a veil over his face because um, he was just glowing, like mm-hmm. glowing. And it reminds me of Acts four thirteen, um, And when they're talking about um, the disciples preaching, it said when they saw the courage of Peter and John, they realized they were unschooled, ordinary men and were astonished. And they took note these men had been with Jesus. So this was glowing in a different way because Moses physically was glowing. But Peter and John later, we're going to get there in the New Testament, their actions were kind of glowing. Like these people mm. had been with Jesus. Moses had been with God. Like something happens when we take time to be with God. And, you know, that is my desire first that God has amazing plans for me, just like he did for Aaron. Ones I didn't even know about yet. You know, years ago, he had plans for me to be a writer and have these kids and for us to do this podcast. And then as we spend time in his presence, and then we actually do the things that he says, we must do what he says, then we could see a difference. And maybe people can see a glow as we tell about what God's done, as we share his good news with others, as I'm patient with my kids. I mean, hopefully that glow will spread and they'll be able to see like, oh, mom has been with Jesus today. Yeah. It's okay. Like <laughs> they used to send each other down and say before the homeschool day, go see how mom's doing today. <laughs> and sure enough, if I didn't have time with Jesus, they're like, oh, she's in a bad mood today. I wonder if they went up like, okay, it's clear. She's had her quiet time. We can all go downstairs now. That's when I had seven kids around the homeschooling table. Now I only have four. So, but yeah. well, I think I think there is there is a glow. There 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 is something that's that's different about us when we are spending time with mm-hmm. God. I, I know that throughout the years, a couple of people ha- or several people have mentioned to me, "You must be in love." There's yeah. a glow about you, and I step back and I'm like. Well, in okay. love with, with God, I, I don't, you know, it's nothing, it, it's not something that, you know, it's mm-hmm. no person. And, and, and I would just say, well, it's, it's what God is doing in my life that mm-hmm. is, is making my face. And, um, I wouldn't see it. I still don't see like, just so we're talking about a glow people have mentioned in the last few months, I have a glow about me. <laughs> When I showed John the picture of you and Joe, he's like, oh, look at that glow on her face. (laughs) So we saw, yeah, so I love that. Like, you know, you're getting married, this glow of love, but also Mm -hmm. like we could have the same glow when we are just like so in love with God. It's just, yes. Yeah. Yeah. There, there is, there is something about what God, there is something about what God does in our hearts that comes out. Mm -hmm. And, and so when there is love in our hearts, if it's for a person, it's that, that love, that glow is going to come out. There's love for God in our hearts. That glow is going to come out. You know, one thing that we didn't touch on today in more depth. And, and again, that's just because we don't have time to talk about, about everything we want to talk about, but um, God, God showed his glory to Moses. Like, showed his glory because Moses is like, show me, show me. I want to see your face. And of course we know that Moses could not see God's face because that he would have died. But, but, um, but he showed 
Moses his glory. And sometimes we call this the Shekinah glory. And there's several places in the Old Testament where we do see this Shekinah glory, but it's a Hebrew word meaning he caused to dwell. It's a divine visitation of presence or a dwelling of God on earth, the Shekinah glory. I, I just like it because it has a cool name, but the Shekinah glory is just, it's its a really cool concept that as we're talking about our face being radiant or showing this glow, the mm-hmm. Shekinah glory of God um, radiating and glowing towards Moses, to Moses. That's so cool. I remember my grandma, like growing up, like, praying lord give us your shekinah glory <laughs> so I, was like, I didn't know what it meant and i love how you said that means to dwell and i looked it up it's a visible re- representation of god on earth he is dwelling he is there he is mm. representing himself in that glory and what a beautiful way to end these chapters that god you know he sh- has these high standards but then he does it for a purpose and even though they're sinning he still wants to meet with them and dwell with them Mm -hmm. and be represented among them. And Moses saw that because Moses asked, Moses said, Lord, show me your glory. Would more people have seen his glory if they would have asked? I mean, maybe. Yeah, I think so. If we can ask today, like, Lord, show us your glory. He's not probably going to hide us in the crevice and (laughs) walk in front of us, but I think he can show us his glory today. And I think, we will glow if we experience mm-hmm. God's glory in our ordinary days. I want to take a moment just to pray for our friends to experience that glory. Yes. Father, I just pray um, for those who are listening today and for Tricia and myself, just Lord, that we would, we would just see who you truly are as we read, as we listen, as we go about the days And may we represent you. May there be a glow in our lives. And um, Father, just continue to imprint your your ways and your word on our hearts that um, we may know you more. And because we know you more, we are um, showing you to a world that and people who might need to know you, um, who do need to know you. Thank you, Father, for how you work. And thank you for your love for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are just sending you off with some daily encouragement to get in the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. And tomorrow, we just have a simple two chapters to cover. Not that bad. Just two. Exodus 35 and 36. And I just want to take a second as we're wrapping things up to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership. You would not be listening to Trisha and myself without them. Go to lifeaudio.com. You're going to find other great podcasts that will encourage you in your walk with God. They've got shows about prayer, uh, Bible study, parenting, and so much more. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye. You say you'll never join the Navy. That living on a submarine would be too hard. You'd never power a whole ship with nuclear energy. Never bring a patient back to life. Or play the national anthem for a sold-out crowd. Joining the Navy sounds crazy. Saying never actually is. Start your journey at Navy.com. America's Navy. Forged by the sea.